Well, hello everybody and mm, welcome to another video. Quick request, please don't click off this video in the next two minutes as I talk about what I am about to talk about. I know some people just want to see the action, they, they don't want to hear me ramble on, but I just feel like I need to say this. Uh, so today we are out with the film camera, we're just outside the Lake District, I'm running a bit late, I was tired, I stopped, got a coffee, thought I would just do this quick introduction. Now, I'm shooting with this camera, this is Hasselblad 501CM, shoots square medium format film images. That shouldn't take away from your enjoyment of this video if you only like to shoot digital, because photography is photography, but every time I shoot with this camera or any other film cameras, it's inevitable that I get the questions, you know, why bother? Digital is so much better. Some people refuse to watch the channel if I'm shooting film, which if you are a photographer, that is such a narrow-minded viewpoint. I can't even begin to explain because photography is so much more than the camera that's in your hand. Uh, but anyway, people say, why, why, why? Um, well, there's not really a, an argument for it, um, to be honest. Digital is superior to film in terms of technicalities and the amount of versatility that you have with the image, the raw file, the cropping, the, uh, the, the processing you can do to the image and all that sort of stuff, whereas film's very limiting. But for me, like today, for example, I'm not out to create the world's best award-winning image. If I was travelling, you know, to North Pole on a once-in-a-lifetime trip, I wouldn't take my film camera because it'd be too risky. But when I'm out and about in my local area, I just want to enjoy myself. And today, I really, really just fancied a bit of film and it, it comes down to nothing more than that I fancied it and when you're out in the field with a camera like this that's analog manual controls you've got to really look at and understand what you're photographing from tonality to light to color to composition so much more than you do when you have a digital camera with so many aids on it so it makes it a very immersive experience and 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 the joy and the pride you get when you shoot film, get it processed, and you look at the negatives, and you get them scanned, and you see, you've done it, I've done it. I've created an image from, from a piece of film capturing light. Anyway, it's fantastic. But, I was, um, the last film video I shot, I captured this image, and it, I think this is my best video that I've done this year. So yeah, I started off the day feeling really low. Every time I took an exposure, I felt better. And by the end of the day, I was on cloud nine and finished with this photograph. Um, I got this image print re-scanned professionally scanned and printed at a lab in the northeast of england very close to where i live in newcastle uh, they're called river and coast and i was so impressed the print is beautiful i can't believe how good it looks um, and actually if you look at the scan and then i reprocess the scan and we compare that to my original scan man they're worlds apart so i was just so happy with the whole thing and i got the print the other day and i was just looking at it thinking how nice it looked and it was that that got my juices flowing and thought, oh, I just want to get out with the film camera again. Um, so yeah, they, that's 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 why we're out. River and Coast, by the way, they're a, if you want film scan or want any prints, I'm going to recommend them. They're phenomenal. And uh, they've even offered me to give to you a discount code, which, which I always think sounds a bit funny. Um, but it's an incentive to get you to go there and print, basically. 10% off. But it's a local business. Um, it's not a big chain or anything, so I'm obviously going to support them. So, yeah. Um, discount code in the description below. They're fantastic. But, mm, this. This is what we're using today. Do I think I'm going to get any fantastic images? Well, probably not. The lights, weather's not great. It's a bit iffy, a bit on and off. Got my paper maps. I'm going to get my map out. Hike up a big mountain. Shoot some film. <laughs> And, uh, and end the world's longest intro to a photography video. So I've just taken my first photograph and um, 
Yeah, I took it in a bit of a rush because I can see a lot of weather coming towards me. And uh, I'm fairly exposed up here and this camera isn't going to fare well to a downpour, which is why I've got all my layers on and my waterproof jacket because I can see the rain heading this way. Hopefully it doesn't come across into this valley. So I can't quite tell what's happening with the light. It's uh, it's quite strong one minute, very diffused the next. So I'm guessing there's quite a lot of cloud um, behind this hill that I can't see. But this is this is the type of photography I enjoy. You know, just peaceful. Just find a spot, sit down, relax, and wait, and just see what happens. It's just so nice up here. It's funny because I also enjoy frantic running around, you know, getting the shot as the you know, very sort of uh, reactive, frantic photography I also enjoy, so. I just love all photography, what can I say? So the light's quite nice now actually, so I think I'll take a shot, half a second F16. Let's have a look. It's quite nice. So it's half a second F16. try a, a longer focal length. So I thought I'd give it a go uh, with a 150 millimeter lens rather than an 80 millimeter lens. So we'll be getting a lot tighter in on Great Gable, which is the main subject. Ah, oh, the light. <laughs> The light is just beautiful. It is. I considered running around trying to find other compositions, but with film, it's too slow. It's not, it's just not worth it. It turns into a wild goose chase, um, especially in this terrain. Like it's very steep where I am. I can't get anywhere quickly. So yeah, we'll stay put. No, I like it. I don't know if I like, hang on. This feels like an awkward camera angle. There we go, I like it. Uh, I don't know if I prefer it to the wider shot, um, but hey, I like it. So let's go for a shot, half a second. F16, yeah. Yeah, half a second, F16. And we still have a lovely, lovely light, although it is fading fast. So that was 150 mil, so a tighter crop on what we've been shooting all evening. look like a beer. It's not a beer. It's uh, it's a soft drink from Glen Affric Breweries. And my wife got me these and I thought I recognised the logo, Glen Affric Breweries. I remember when I first started YouTube, there was another lad who also had a photography channel called Craig. And his channel was called, his channel was called Pixel, Destructive Pixels. And I used to watch his channel all the time. I used to, I used to love his content. And then one day he just stopped 
and I was really sad. This is quite a few years ago. Um, like I genuinely like <laughs> like like I was like, oh man, what happened to Craig? Anyway, it turns out he started Glen Affric Brewery. So he left YouTube and started a brewery. Obviously, this is a soft drink, but they do beers as well. But um, yeah, I can't help but think I've chosen the wrong career path. <laughs> Maybe I should have left back in the day and started a brewery. Mm. Oh. Anyway, definitely recommend. So, it's late. It's quarter to ten. I have no plan for sunrise. But what I do know is that wherever I shoot at sunrise, I want to roll out of bed and be there. I am I am absolutely done in. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm turn you off, um, have a look at a map, give myself 10-15 minutes, just have a think where I want to shoot, and then I'll have to drive there, park up, Probably have something to eat. I don't know. It's going to be a late night, early start. Uh, that's the problem with this time of year. So, um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll just do that, and, uh, and I'll catch you in less than two seconds. So it's midnight, sunrise is at 5.38 in the morning, which means I need to be up at five. So I will bid you all farewell and I will see you all in the morning. Good night. Well, good morning everybody and welcome to Thilmia. It's a nice morning. It is a nice morning. I had a terrible sleep. Must have only got three hours. For some reason I just couldn't nod off, but uh, yeah, it's good to be out. Unfortunately, the uh, the water levels aren't as low <laughs> as I hoped. I always, um, I'm always guilty of, you know, getting carried away, like, like, convincing myself that conditions are going to be a certain way or something and that I thought for sure that this water level would be much lower and I might be able to get out to this island just here but it's not the case um, I'm not sure there's, there's yeah there's not going to be any light this morning I don't know I mean to be honest I'd say the chances of me taking an image are quite low but I'm going to have a bit of a stroll wander along the lake shore and see if something catches my eye maybe it will maybe it won't but uh, yeah, you can't be being at a place like this so early in the morning. It's gorgeous. So it didn't take long before I found a subject to photograph. I challenge anybody, anybody who calls himself a photographer, 
to walk past that tree and not want to take a shot. It was just, it was almost too good to be true. Um, it's incredibly awkward to frame it. I'm stood on the top of a boulder. My tripod is precariously balanced on the boulder, but I managed to frame it up just how I want it. Let me, um, let me explain. So in order to photograph this tree how I want it, I had to get up on this boulder. I had to get up high, basically. Because when you look out to the lake there, you can see there's this beautiful area of calm, still water where it's nice and dark and black as it reflects the uh, fells across of the adjacent or distant shore. But if you look out further across into the lake or the, uh, the reservoir, you can see that there's this bright white strip. That's where the wind is blowing down the reservoir. It's causing ripples, the ripples reflect the sky. It just causes this unsightly brightness, um, which isn't very attractive. It's not too bad, but I have to make sure that the top of the tree there doesn't intersect with either the distant fells or this bright strip of water. The only way to do that is to scramble up this boulder and get nice and high. So if I didn't put my tripod on that rock there and get as high as I possibly could, the tree would be lost. When you photograph it, it would be lost in the background, the fells and the distracting white band of water. So it, basically when you find a subject, or when I find a subject, I just I'd like to take a few moments, look at it, and try and consider everything that's not the subject and how it interacts with the subject. And in my case, it was obviously the distant fells and that uh, white band of water there. So to eliminate that, get up high, isolate the tree in the black shadow of the distant fells, and we'll make for a much cleaner image. So for breakfast, we've got a delicious, um, delicious sloppy porridge and a lovely coffee, which I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. The photography, I feel, hasn't been that great, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, it's just, that's this the thing. If you're new to photography, like, don't expect it to be amazing every time you go out. It's the thrill of the chase that brings me back time and time again, you know? Stumbling upon those perfect conditions, those perfect compositions, and getting it all right doesn't happen every single day. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. The thing with film is um, I won't know until a couple of weeks' time if any of the images have come out. So uh, it's always funny because you've seen them. I haven't. <laughs> so who knows? But anyway, it's... Um, yeah, it's that time of year now where sunset is late, especially when you're up a mountain and sunrise is early. So I've only had a few hours sleep. I'm going to eat my breakfast, have a coffee. I'm going to relax for a little bit. And then I'm going to spend the afternoon exploring and planning out locations for next week's video. So uh, make sure you tune in for that. Um, support the channel. How do you support the channel? Uh, if you've liked it, give it a like. Thumbs up is a massive help. Also, I have a book available. It's um, in the description below, landscape photography on location. And yeah, that's about as much as I dare plug in this video. So until next time, thank you for watching. And bye for now, guys. Bye. <laughs>